What's up guys, my name is Bart Komar and today we're gonna be making some steel doors for my shed. Now, these are not your typical kind of doors that you would put on a shed, but then again, who wants to be typical? So let's have some fun with this one and welcome to the Komar Project. All right guys, so the first thing that I need to do is to build a frame that the sheet steel can sit in and then I can weld it into place. And to do that, I need to cut miters. And since I don't have a chop saw, we're gonna use a grinder, because you can. The metal I'm using for the frame is a 16 gauge one by two tube steel. And working with steel is a little bit more forgiving than working with wood. You don't have to be as precise with your cuts and joints because luckily for me, you can fill those in with a weld and grind it down. The only downside is there's a lot of sparks. Holy bajoli, I just caught on fire. Check this out. Another shirt ruined. Ruined another shirt. This is like fourth shirt. I could put a pencil here. Would you like your steak medium or rare? Sometimes I get so excited to work on a project that I don't realize the simplest things, like I'm catching myself on fire. But with my butcher's apron on, I was able to finish all the cuts, clean off the steel with a flap disc, and I'm ready to start welding all the miter corners for the frame. All right, so we got our frame all welded up. So the next step is to actually get the sheet metal into the frame. But first I wanna weld on these tabs on the inside of the frame. This is gonna allow my sheet metal to sit in there and not drop all the way through. So we're gonna to have to elevate these with a piece of plywood and tack them in. I put the tabs in every 16 inches or so, and there was about 12 of them per door, which allowed me to work on my welding skills before I could put the sheet steel in. And this channel bar that I'm putting in was going to be a track to keep the door from swinging away from the shed and keep the doors in line. But I found a track system on Amazon that I'm gonna be installing later that worked really well. With the sheet steel cut to size, I can now weld it into the frame. But with it being so flexible and wanting to bow constantly, I needed to come up with some sort of spacer to elevate. So the same piece of flat bar I used on the tabs and half inch plywood gave me the right offset and I could weld it into place. Okay. All right, I got a bit of an issue. I believe it was the heat from the welding has warped this entire door to the point that I, I can't install it this way because you're gonna have one door that's straight and another one that's like this, and then it's just gonna look really oh, poopy. It's gonna look really poopy. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what to do right now. Holy bajoli, man. I don't know if this is fixable. Like it does one of these. Like it wants to go around the corner or something. <laughs> Let's work the problem. Don't let the problem work you. It's so working me right now. Working the problem.
All right, so uh, I don't know if this is gonna work, but watching paint dry or metal straightening itself out. Okay, so obviously that process did not work, but that doesn't mean it's an absolute failure because I learned that this process doesn't work. So we're gonna try something else and this is more aggressive and not as scientific as it was before. I cannot believe that just worked. So I guess the extra pounds over Christmas. Fried chicken, fried green tomatoes, stuffed shrimp, muffalata. That I haven't lost yet from like three years ago. Paid off. All right, so I found this really cool piece. This was in my backyard, buried in the ground. And when they were installing the pool, they actually pulled this up. So this would have probably been for you know, separating a garden or something like that. I think this is gonna look absolutely awesome on the doors. So let's cut this thing up. The idea for these doors is for them to look old, like they've been patched over the years and been sitting outside rusting. And these garden separators will make them look like they've had hinges at one point as well. I tacked them into place and to dress them up a little bit, I did some spot welding on the top of them to give the impression that they were pinned at one point. And because I really liked how that came out with the spot welding on them, I decided to add the same look on the frame of the door with a little hammer action to give them a flattened appearance. Then came my favorite part, adding the patches of scrap steel, different metal circles and gears that came from my local junkyard. The saying that one man's trash is another's treasure is definitely true in this instance, and anytime I can repurpose something old makes me feel really good. All right. This is going to be the handle for my door. So I just want this gear. This used to sit on top of an old washing machine and you would crank it and wring your clothes out. So this is really cool gear. And first I need to get all this gunk off of it because it's got years of oil and dunk and just gunk. And I'm just gonna throw it in some Evaporust and then we can work on the second door while it's working. All right, since these are gonna be barn door sliders, I got myself some vintage looking hardware. And this is the same exact hardware that I used on the loft bed build. And the doors being so heavy, they're probably about 150 to 200 pounds each. These are rated for 200 pounds. And my only concern is that these wheels right here are plastic, everything else is metal. So we're gonna give it a shot, but down the road, I might have to change these out. But for the cost, can't go wrong. So let's make these things look not so pretty. I think that will do. I'm not taking off all the powder coating, just enough to make it look like it's been beat up. So we're on track. 
with these wheels being plastic grinding on them like you would do on steel wouldn't do anything. So I used a can of silver spray paint to give them a metal look. To attach the hardware, I drilled a hole for the top bolt only to use as a guide. Then I can square it to the door using my combination square and weld it into place permanently. I was afraid that because this hardware had some room to adjust up and down and these doors being so heavy that they would get out of alignment over time. So a couple of welds just made sure that it wouldn't shift over the years. With the doors all finished, I can take them outside and get them cleaned off with a metal cleaner and degreaser. I sprayed it on using a Scotch-Brite pad to get all the oils off before washing them off with a hose. And I was very impressed with how well it worked. I wasn't expecting these doors to look as shiny as they did. So to mute that down a little bit, I'm gonna go with a matte finish. All right guys, so I'm almost ready to hang these doors, but before I do that, I actually need to seal them. And I'm gonna be using Sculpt Nouveau's two-part urethane resin. These doors are gonna be outside and they are metal, so rust can definitely happen. So to make sure that all the work that I put it into these doors doesn't go to waste, we're clear coating them. Let's do it. This finish is not intended to be rolled or brushed on, so I use my HVLP sprayer to apply two coats on both sides of the doors. This will protect the doors for years and prevent them from rusting any further. Next, I can mount the track to the shed and finally see how these doors look on it. All right guys, so there you go. We got ourselves some steel barn doors on my shed and I couldn't be happier with the way they turned out. There's still a few things that I need to figure out on it, like how to actually lock it. I was thinking about some gear system that actually locks the shed so that way nobody ever gets in because once this thing is locked up, they're not getting in. A completely new project for me. I'm not a welder and I don't claim to be, but I think that if you don't try new skills, you're never gonna be able to know what you can accomplish. We as people can make some incredible things. Now, I'm not saying that these doors are incredible, but I did learn a great deal going through this project. But more importantly, I had fun with it. And now we got a building on our property that is completely different than everything around us, which for me, I think is pretty cool. So if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. And if you wanna see the other videos in the Shed Build series, I'm gonna link those down below. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I'll see you guys next time. All right, I got my hammer, let's go. What to do, what to do. And high heat output, high heat, that's what we need. Don't look down the barrel of the gun, Bart. I got something in my mouth. I have my tooth. Ah. I think I'm ready.